I'm Sammy. I work for AEA, uh, running the sales and marketing. So uh, we'll start with the uh, 44. This is the actually the high output version because of the uh, red badge. Um, the 44 was the first great uh, microphone, not just ribbon microphone, but great microphone. And uh, in the 70s, AEA started uh, doing service work on these microphones, doing re-ribboning with uh, original ribbon stock, uh, and we started making replacement parts. In the 90s, we hit 100% completion of the parts and uh, started uh, actually putting together our own uh, 44s with the replacement parts. Um, they're identical in almost every way, other than the, the uh, magnets, which we use neodymium, which are stronger. And uh, the uh, yoke is cast bronze instead of zinc, because zinc, as you know, can uh, start to crumble when uh, water gets into like an old car. So that's uh, the, the 44, which is beautiful for uh, anything from recording an entire orchestra to recording a drum set to a crooning vocalist who uh, just wants to, to beef up their voice or uh, who wants more room sound if they want to go further back. Uh, wonderful and amazing for, for upright bass, cello, any, any classical instrument, brass. Uh, it's kind of the all around sounds magnificent on anything you put it on, uh, but especially and most importantly in a good sounding room. Uh, a not as good sounding room will not sound as good with this microphone, uh, unless you're up very close, in which case you'll still sound good. So uh, this microphone's the R84. Uh, it was a, it's the first custom mic that we built back, I think, in 2001. Um, this mic uh, was modeled after the R44. It uses the same ribbon, along with all these mics, except for the, the KE4 is the only one that uses a different ribbon, uh, being that it's a super cardioid. All of these are also figure eights except for that mic. But uh, the R84 uh, was supposed to be a lower cost version of the 44. It sounds quite a bit different, but, uh, but it still has similar characteristics to it. It uses uh, different magnets, different kind of uh, uh, motor design. Um, but uh, the same transformer as well. And uh, in, in a lot of ways, it's, it can be used in the same way as a 44, but generally I would use it a lot closer up. So it's, we call it the workhorse mic. We use it on almost anything from, but, but it is uh, probably the, the best uh, brass and saxophone mic that we make other than the, the 44, and probably better than the 44 in a lot of regards, depending on the, the room and the, the style of playing. But uh, it gets used on everything from acoustic guitar to uh, singers, uh, woodwind instruments, strings, uh, really as an application mic where you put it on um, maybe a section or on uh, if you want to really beef something up in the same way you do with a 44, but it's a, a lot less expensive and a lot lighter. So you could put it on any kind of a stand. Um, and then the mic next to it is uh, the phantom powered version of, of the 84, which uh, the only difference other than it's uh, gold plated is that uh, it has a buffer board in it and a custom transformer that we have made in Germany that uh, gives you an extra 12 dB of output and keeps the impedance very consistent so you can use it with any type of preamp uh, that's maybe a little bit noisier, has a nice color to it, but that wouldn't generally work with a ribbon mic, so it makes it a lot more versatile. You could use it with a cheap, uh, you know, not, not so great interface, or you could use it with a, uh, with a very fantastic interface. And either way, it's gonna have a little bit of a different sound because of the transformer, um, in my opinion, a little more uh, defined in the low end, a little bit more of a kind of an upper uh, mid-range sweetness to it. Uh, maybe more upfront sounding, but very similar characteristics between the two of them. The next mic is the, uh, the R92, which uh, this was originally marketed as a guitar mic because we, uh, it sounds great on guitars, it's a very classic sound. It's very similar to, to the 84 in construction uh, uh, on the inside in terms of the, the magnets, the uh, um, I guess the different parts of it. So the magnets are the same, the transformer, the ribbon, uh, but the elements surrounding that, the, uh, the puff shield, the uh, fabric, the way that it's put together, the, the motor shape is much different uh, than the 84. So it's a bit brighter sounding on the front. The back uh, has a different uh, layer of, uh, of fabric, so it gives it a bit of a different sound. Some people describe it as creamier, a little more old school sounding. Uh, so it's almost like two in one if you were to, to buy this mic. Uh, you get two different mics depending on how you position it. And uh, it's meant to be used up a bit closer than the 84, so you can put on a guitar cab. Um, but where we found it's really fantastic is actually on percussion. So if you put it on a floor tom, kick drum, not, not in the hole, because that'll, that'll hurt it. But if you put it over to the side the same way you use a FET 4.7 or another 
condenser and kick drum, it's amazing on kick. Um, also vocal, sounds great on the back side, front side too, depending on who the singer is. Um, but it's a, a fantastic mic for, for you know, close applications if you want an old school sounding ribbon. This mic right here is the R88. It's a stereo microphone that uh, we have positioned in uh, bloom line. So one mic is going this way, one mic is going this way. It's a figure of eight. So uh, it's very natural sounding in the sense that uh, the way that we generally use it at AEA when we have a session is we'll put it, uh, we'll walk around the room, let's say we're listening to a drum set or to a string section, and uh, listen to where it sounds good. Listen with your ears, close your eyes, walk around where it sounds either uh, very balanced, where it sounds interesting, and you put the mic there and generally it sounds uh, very good. There's, it doesn't sound exactly like your ears, but it's the closest to, to that of the mics that we make. It's very natural, very honest sounding. Um, very uh, just smooth and, and realistic so it's amazing for for drum overheads if you if you're into uh, blue line style or if you're more familiar with with uh, making a drum set XY uh, it's great for an entire ensemble uh, miking an entire orchestra from over the the conductor you know positioning it this way and it's also amazing for for mid side if if you like that technique uh, this is, it's used that way all the time. Um, but if you want to get very interesting with it, one of the things you can do too for a, a guitar cab uh, is put it on like a, a 2x12 or a 4x10, uh, put it right in front of the, the, uh, the cab, you know, if it's right there, and get a stereo image of the, the guitar amp. And you can pull it back for more of a, a roomier or reverby kind of tone that could blend in with something up close. Uh, but I love this mic, it's one of my favorites that we make. The KU-4 is uh, the first supercardioid mic that we've made at AEA. Uh, I believe it's the first supercardioid uh, created in 50 years. Um, there aren't many supercardioid ribbon mics. There's uh, a few. Uh, most of them were made a long, long time ago. Um, this is actually based on the RCA KU-3A. The KU-3A was, uh, I think there were 600 of them made. They were originally made for, uh, for movies so that, uh, you know, as a, as a mic that would uh, capture either sounds or dialogue, but uh, but it was uh, great for for scoring stages as well, and um, when when you had a good mic. But every single KU3A sounded very different from one another, and the reason is that uh, it's a very complex and and weird design for a ribbon mic. It uses a smaller ribbon, which is an inch and a quarter long, uh, and on the back side, which you can't really see because it's covered. Um, we have what we call a, a tube in there, not, not like a 12AX7, but a, an actual physical mechanical tube that goes into what we call a labyrinth, which is this, this section right here. It's basically a machined piece of metal that has a bunch of holes in it that a RCA would put uh, curly cow hair from the back of a cow's neck into all these different holes, and it would essentially dampen the, the sound in the back uh, through you know, with other techniques, creating the, the supercardioid pattern. And uh, no cow sounds the same as one another. They all sound very different. Uh, so they were very inconsistent. So when we created this mic, we had to take a ton of different KU3As and look at them and, and find ones that sounded good, find the ones that we, that we enjoyed the sound of, and kind of figure out how to get a, a melded sound of the ones that we liked into one mic. So we were able to do that through five years of R&D and of, of putting it together and trying to figure out uh, how to make a nice sounding super cardioid and that's the, the mic we have here. It's, uh, oh, and for applications, uh, it's amazing on vocals. It's one of the best vocal mics we make, in my opinion. Uh, strings, it actually works very well on electric and acoustic guitar. Um, it's a bit different sounding than the rest of these ribbons where a lot of these ribbons have a very nice uh, and amplified low end, that's, that's very big. This mic is not lacking low end, but it's very balanced from top to bottom. It's very smooth, very natural. Uh, there isn't another ribbon mic that sounds like this ribbon mic, and that's what makes it so appealing and so versatile and so different. Uh, so it's nice to, to uh, try one if you ever get the opportunity. The next mic is the N22. The N22 is uh, a different ribbon mic than any of the other ones we have as well. Uh, it's part of the Nouveau series, which is our new, uh, our Nouveau series. Um, but 
essentially this mic uses the same ribbon as the 44, uh, but when we created this, uh, what we wanted to do was make a mic that would work for people who don't have a lot of experience with ribbon mics. But, uh, but that wouldn't just be catered towards them, it would also be a mic that could be used in a nice studio where uh, you want a specific sound. So this mic was meant to, we call it a near-field ribbon, where uh, kind of like near-field monitors. Most ribbon mics uh, you want to use from a bit of a distance, whether that distance is 6 inches to 20 feet. The 44 gets equal treble and bass at 20 feet away and proximity effect at 6 feet away. So the second between me and the camera, the 44 would be getting proximity effect right now if the camera was the mic. Uh, whereas the, the N22 is the opposite of that. Uh, we have a built-in uh, pop screen that is the diameter of this little badge at the top. So I don't know if you can see it, but if you hold it up to the light, you can't see the ribbon in there. So it's very well protected. That also works as a mechanical high-pass filter, which uh, in turn allows you to put it up really close on a guitar amp, and it's going to sound very natural without a huge boost of bass. Uh, if you do that with any of the other mics, you're just going to get a lot of proximity effect, which doesn't necessarily sound bad. That's what some people want in a recording, but the N22 is a very natural sounding ribbon. It also has a little bit more uh, of, of an aggressive uh, mid-range, I would say, that, uh, that can lend itself very well to uh, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, vocals. Um, it's a more modern sounding ribbon, but it still has the classic characteristics of the rest of these microphones. And then the, the, uh, this is the N8, which is the opposite. We call them yin and yang. Uh, this one's meant to be used up close. The N8 is meant to be used from far away. So it's designed really for uh, strings, uh, for drum overheads, drum rooms, uh, piano, anything that you would want to use from a distance to really capture an instrument in, in the room itself. So that you could, if, if let's say we're in this room and this has a nice reverb to it, this mic would capture that nice reverb of the strings in that room. Um, so on the other hand, people still like to use it on guitars. <laughs> you, you make a mic and people, that's the first thing we'll do is stick it on a guitar amp. So uh, we actually had this uh, windscreen designed custom from WinTech um, for the N8. So you can use it outdoors, you can use it up close on any instrument. Uh, it's very transparent sounding, so you're still going to get a very similar, uh, if not the same tone, uh, with or without it. Might, it, has, it affects it a little bit, but uh, it's very slight. So, but it allows you to be able to put it on a guitar amp. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put both of these together. Uh, definitely want to use the windscreen. Uh, right next to each other to get the aggressive uh, upper tone and natural sound and then for a passage uh, where let's say there you know there are no drums or you, it's a solo guitar you stick this with it and you can get a very nice beefy low end and, and it almost can make your guitar sound like a, a baritone guitar because it's so uh, deep but but generally this is meant to be used from far away um, things like strings and drums and uh, whole sections of orchestras uh, for uh, both of these mics, the N22 and the N8, they're both phantom powered as well. Uh, they both have the, the same custom transformer uh, from Germany as the uh, 840 and uh, this uh, same active buffer board inside of it. So it allows you to use it with any interface, any preamp. Um, it's very plug and play and not, you don't have to mess with, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you don't have to mess with it in the same way that you'd have to mess with an older ribbon mic or uh, other, other brands ribbon mics. Uh, but this mic we call it the N8 because it's essentially half of an 88, which is the, the stereo mic. So, uh, in fact, when, when we designed the N8, we took 88 motors and physically cut them down to fit inside of the, the enclosure, inside of the body of the N8. And I, I tried the first prototype model, and we had a bunch of different cut-down motors and stuck them all in front, uh, front of a drum set on a bunch of different applications. I listened and I said, okay, mic's, mic's done. That was easy. But, but honestly, it, it sounds a little bit different um, because of the transformer, because of the, the motor shape is a little bit different. Um, so it has a kind of like the, the 840 to the, the 84, has a little bit of a sweeter upper mid-range, uh, a little more of a defined low end, and uh, more kind of an upfront sound. But if you were to get two of these and put them in boom line, it'd be very close to an 88.